What would it take for you to sell out your species? $100? $200? An all-expense-paid trip to Build-A-Bear? Or would you do it for free? Well, while humans may be cheap, other species set their eyes on what they assume to be unlimited power at the cost of throwing entire worlds into the furnace. The maker species enlisted the help of the Night Sentinels and began branching out faster across the stars. As they did, all demons we currently see in the Hell Plane and on Earth were once regular animals that had been corrupted and contorted by the Hell Energy. With their souls extracted, or if deemed unworthy, cast to the wayside, they would wander the plains until finally turning into what we have seen. For a time, this was acceptable for the makers, but the issue began to arise once the Night Sentinels began to realize what was happening. They weren't spreading their influence along with their gods, the makers. They were actually just basically kidnapping worlds and empowering their enemies unknowingly. The Night Sentinels at this point were fairly familiar with the demons. What they didn't know, however, was that by working with the makers, they were actually fueling their foes as well as fueling their own society. With this realization came a schism. This resulted in a large portion of Night Sentinel warriors along with the Doomslayer being trapped on the other side of a Hell portal after an invasion of Hell was launched. However, the demons and the makers would come to find out that the Doomslayer wasn't trapped there with the demons, but the demons were trapped there with the Doomslayer. But regardless of that, after all but one had fallen, the remaining Night Sentinels back planet side were slowly corrupted. This corruption would continue until their entire species was consumed, but it didn't stop there. Wrongly assuming that the corruption was just for lesser species, the Makers would continue to toy and control the Hell Energy, or at least think they were controlling it, fueling their own cities and lifespans. Continuing to appease the Soul Well by acquiring other worlds to essentially pay tribute with their lives, this would make the Makers one of the most powerful species in the universe, or at least the universe that is known. Fortunately, this would not not last forever. Hell energy is like a cancer. It spreads slowly at first, but as it corrupts the very fabric of thinking and action, the makers would find themselves just as influenced as any other animal. This influence may have very well shown itself early on after its discovery with the makers being the first to be corrupted. Likely technologically advanced at this point, the hell energy would compel them to continue its work by throwing others into the fire so that they had the power. They would then spread out and ensure that they were able to continue to do so. That said, early on, there may have been those specifically who were corrupted further. So wow, that was a long-winded intro, but today it's pretty clear what we're talking about. The Archviles from Doom Eternal, not to be confused with the Summoners from Doom 2016, which I made a video on that, and all the salt associated with that one. I may have an explanation as to why they could be different as opposed to what we see with the Archviles, but anyhow, let's get to where these creatures come from and why their very existence should have concerned the makers from the very beginning, but clearly they weren't using their upstairs brains when making the choices they did. All right, let's get to it. At the earliest stages of hell energy being discovered, you have to ask yourself, how exactly did this all get started and with what? Now, it's pretty obvious the Maker's plans are later, find a species, implant yourself as essentially gods to that species, and considering the technology levels that the Makers possessed, they really weren't far from it. And then they would go in and harvest the species for their own gain. But that doesn't explain how this originally all began kicking off. Likely once the Maker species figured out how to traverse actual universes, this is when they made their discovery. The Makers aren't necessarily of our universe. Instead, they hail from a dimension known as Erdash. Erdak is only accessible to the makers or species that they deem fit to join them there. Some of the Night Sentinels appear to have been to Erdak at some point, but this degree of separation kept the makers somewhat safe from the literal hell that they wrought on others. Upon opening the portals to a new dimension, eventually they found the Hell Dimension. While there, likely what happened is as they began to explore it, they found ancient demons that were older than likely their own species. Moving further into this plane of existence, they eventually stumbled across an energy source that would spell disaster for billions, if not trillions. During during this initial discovery, the corruption began to take a hold of specific makers. This corruption still exists today. The makers are incredibly intelligent as a race, and it's shown with their technological prowess and ability to absolutely subjugate others. You would think, being as smart as they are, that they would be able to see what's happening to themselves, but that's how insidious hell energy is. Much like the volunteers where humans were turned into revenants, good-natured scientists began to tread down some dark paths, thinking it was their own ideas. It would appear as though the makers are not so different from the mortal race in this respect. And also, uh, the makers like to call themselves immortal, but they really only live about 10,000 years, so they're definitely still mortal as well. But this corruption can be seen in how they treat dimensions as farms. In their own physiology, knocking off the faceplate of the con maker reveals that she is quite demonic looking and definitely ugly. Not just because of her species morphology, but because of her exposure to hell energy that has slowly over time taken a hold of her mind and altered her physical appearance. This opens up the door for her entire species. As we have seen with the females in the con maker race, those 
those exposed to hell energy become the whiplash demons. These demons slither across the ground and possess a lot of the same traits as their less corrupted forms. I would like to correct something also concerning the whiplash as well. In my whiplash episode, I mentioned how the drones that surround the con maker are male and the females were sent to fuel the furnace with their souls. Judging by what we talk about and the fact that the females actually have no legs as shown with the whiplash demon and the con maker, I believe that the drones around the con maker are actually female as well. Trust me, it all makes sense in a moment. But something important to remember about the makers is they're a very old species. Because of this, there are very different variants of them that have evolved over time. Sort of like how if you took a bunch of humans and placed them on Mars, after several generations, they would start to look different from you or I. Larger heads, lankier bodies, less muscle mass, but longer bones. A similar idea to the makers, likely as they spread from system to system. But getting back to the focus of this video, we see the Archvile. The Archvile is considered to be a revamping of the Summoner from Doom 2016, and considering every single game the demon has been physiologically different, this would make sense. But how exactly does the Archvile fit with the rest of the demons and the makers? Well, we will get to that, but before we do, you know, we all know what this channel is apparently about according to the memes. Starting with the feet, we see something that's pretty interesting that may explain what the Archvile used to be. The demon has three major toes tipped with sharp claws several inches in length, likely formed from chitinous material, and we will see this all over the body. However, further back on the foot exists a fourth claw. This claw is what is known as a dew claw on most animals, but I would almost say that the archfile is actually more in line with a prehensile foot due to the toe placement. A prehensile foot basically means that it's used for grasping purposes, and humans, well, maybe not really humans, but more like our ape ancestors, had these type of feet when they weren't completely bipedal. Over time, however, through walking and less grasping of tree branches around the time that the plains of Africa began to sort of widen, and we had to look over tall grass, this has eventually led to the plantigrade structuring of our legs and feet that we have today. Despite walking upright, it would appear that the archfile is a relative newcomer to it based on the mutations caused by hell energy. This is actually backed up later by the other portions of its morphology, which let's move on to that. Heading up to the legs, we see that the chitinous armoring continues to run from the shins up to the thighs. Liken it to the armoring on the imps instead of the heavy leather armoring on the hell knights and barons of hell, this armor would be harder rather than just impact absorbing. This armoring is found throughout and over the entire body, so as a result of this, this would indicate that the archfile may have been more of an insectoid progenitor. Around the knees, the armor comes to a point and can be used more offensively rather than just for pure protection. The thighs are covered as well with this brownish plating and underneath exists a more purplish hue of skin tone. Moving up to the pelvic region, we see that they would have a pelvis much like humans, albeit it would be a lot larger, and this has afforded them the ability to be more humanoid looking and stand upright. Moving up to the abdomen of this creature, it's unlikely that this was a mutation due to the hell energy, but around the center line of the abdomen, it has more armor plating, which may be serving as sort of a secondary spine to this creature, and this may be necessary considering its large stature. The abdomen overall is sucked in, which isn't too strange considering that's what we see on humans after their exposure to hell energy. Presumably the organs atrophy and dissolve away over time. Moving up to the chest of this creature, we see that around the pectorals exists heavy armor plating with jagged spikes around them where the sternum sits. This armor plating runs to the shoulders and underneath we can almost see that the normal pectorals exist with another layer of purplish hue skin tone, meaning that this growth is likely newer than what was originally there. On the back side, this armoring continues with many jagged spikes protruding from the shoulder blades and the spine appearing to have been bolstered, which is pretty common amongst all other demons. The shoulders are quite literally shoulder pads. These massive armored plates sit flanking each side and run down to around the elbows of this demon. The biceps and triceps of this creature are not very large, but that's more due to the size of the arms in terms of length. They are quite elongated. In fact, moving down to the forearms, we see that they are really not like ours. Our radius and ulna bone are roughly about the same length as our humerus bone. In apes that walk on all fours, the forearms are much larger and longer, acting sort of like legs. Which, if we keep that in mind, the forearms of the archvile are quite long, almost doubling the size of the upper arm. Because of this, the prehensile feet, along with this, I would almost conclude that the archvile didn't start standing upright all that long ago. However, once they did, their heads became massive, which we will get to shortly. The hands of the archvile are huge, possessing only two fingers and one thumb. The creature constantly has flames exuding from the palm as hell energy seems to pull in this area. Presumably, sort of like how all imps and hell knights focus their energy in their hands, so too does the archvile, which it will then use to summon in other demons to combat the doomslayer. Moving up to the head, we get to where the real moneymaker is on how all these things are tied into one another. On the chin exists two prongs of bone, which will be important, and the mouth is larger with several jagged teeth, which are all likely a result of hell energy exposure, which we have seen in humans. However, these teeth are not exactly like ours, which may mean that this creature was purely carnivorous even before the hell energy exposure, which let's take a trip down a side tangent. 
it, shall we? Assuming that the arch vials, which, you know, I guess you can call them arc vials, but it's not really A-R-K. There's an H in there. So it's definitely arch vials. Anyways, assuming the arch vials are carnivores rather than, say, humans who are omnivores, this may explain the large brain size that we see. We know human brains started getting larger way back when because of instead of eating just like tough plants and bugs, which had little nutritional value and forced us to have larger, more powerful jaws, we turned to meat. As we did, our brains grew in size not only because we stood upright and the spine supported our giant heads rather than muscle, but the protein boost allowed for more brain growth, which in turn led to our ability to cook foods or at least understand how to cook foods. And this made meat even more tender and unlocked even more nutrition for us, which led to smaller jaws and even larger brains after that. The arch vial, being an assumed purely carnivorous animal and having stood upright, they likely almost had a jump on humanity as they weren't screwing around with low nutrition plants during their evolutionary history. Likely having larger brains anyhow due to the protein that they were consuming, if alien biology could be equated to human biology in terms of evolution, then upon standing upright, their brains would have exploded, which may have led to them to be more intelligent at a faster pace. Although this species is quite old, which may also explain the intellect that it has. Anyhow, the maxilla area around the face, which is under the nose, is large and flat, almost appearing to be devoid of skin, but it could be a smoother version of the chitin found all over. The zygomatic areas around the eyes show that this creature has had a mutation leading to greater bone growth, which honestly isn't all that uncommon looking at the brow ridges of humans and doom eternal after hell energy exposure. Then moving up to the head, we see a somewhat exposed brain likely containing some membrane with bones running off the brow ridge and a center mass bone covering the top. The brain of this creature is massive, which may be why it is able to summon demons at will utilizing its previous intelligence. The Archvile is an incredibly powerful demon as well as pretty tall. Standing roughly 9 feet or around 3 meters, this creature towers over most other demons on the battlefield as well as the Doomslayer. But that doesn't matter because the Doomslayer is swole AF. The Archvile will typically choose to throw up a fire shield as well to block incoming projectiles put down range by the Doomslayer as it begins to summon in demons. Because of this summon ability, it is advised to take this demon down first and foremost. Eventually, if left to its own devices for long enough, this demon is powerful enough to start summoning in its former allies and still allies now, the Marauders. But based on that statement then, what exactly are the Archviles? Well, I'm pretty sure I blew the surprise earlier in this video, but there is really no way to not talk about it. But I believe that there are several hints and clues that actually the Archvile is nothing more than a corrupted maker. But I can hear you now. Roanoke, the Whiplash are a corrupted maker. So then what in the name of all that is unholy is this thing? Well, you know Papa Roanoke has got the answers. What we are looking at here is the elusive male version of the maker. As mentioned previously, the drones surrounding the con maker may actually in fact be females. Comparing them to the con maker, we can still see that they have the same tentacle legs much like their leader has. While they are missing arms, this may actually be due to a maturity thing that they grow later in life, which I have mentioned in the Whiplash video. And considering the con maker does not possess legs in the standard sense, these may never come in for the female drones, and we see that again on the Whiplash. No legs, but it definitely has arms. For the Archvile, it would appear as though the males of the species do have legs. And not only that, but they may have very recently, at least when this Archvile was infested with hell energy, have walked on their front arms in a more quadrupedal fashion like that of an ape. The longer forearms and prehensile feet give some credence to that, as feet like this usually do not exist on a species that spends all its time walking upright. Their relation to the makers is undeniable, with the most basic connection being their hands, possessing the same longer arms and two-fingered, one-thumb hands that the rest of the species seems to possess, it's pretty clear that this is a trait shared by even their uncorrupted forms. However, moving to the most clear connection is the head and face. On all the makers that we have seen, the two protrusions of bone on the chin are there. Even on the con maker, when you knock her mask off and she shows her butt-ugly face, it actually looks roughly about the same as males, which are the archviles. The teeth are also similar, but really the upper portion of the head is where it's most clearly shown. The larger brains with the bone barely covering it show that the archviles are incredibly similar to not only the whiplash demons, but the makers, along with the brow ridge and zygomatic bones surrounding the eyes. On a more casual relation note, the intelligence is also something to be known. Obviously, this species is incredibly smart, and even with the hell energy flowing through them, they retain this. The con maker is still marginally in control of her actions, even though she doesn't really know that she's being altered, and the archvile is the only demon we know of that can literally control the hell energy to the point it can summon in demons to fight for it. Overall size has also a loose connection as well. The maker is a big gal. Sort of like, and I know I have to throw this in there, the big vampire woman, and I'm gonna murder her name, Lady Dimitrescu. Oh god, that just sounds bad. From Resident Evil 8, to give you reference, the con maker is about 9 feet tall as well, or 3 meters herself. There is likely sexual dimorphism concerning height in this species, considering the males 
almost look so different, but size-wise, they are compatible with one another. Now, for the summoner, we gotta talk about it. Looking at Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, it is noted that, yes, art styles did change. I mean, that is very clear. However, with that said, changes are so strikingly different that it's almost like these two aren't even the same species anymore. Whereas the summoner is more slender looking, the archvile is definitely beefier. They do the same thing, but I would still stand by that the summoner, while like an archvile, may be a higher form of imp rather than the archvile who's related to the makers. However, through time and intelligence, they are both able to summon. Now, summoners aren't in Doom Eternal, and archviles aren't in Doom 2016. Make of that what you will. Again, it could just be the art style changes, but headcanon still says to me that these two are separate. And here come the Doom purists. But all this power, height, and intelligence does little in the fight against the Doom Slayer. When entering combat with an archvile, this creature leaves itself highly vulnerable to attack while it's summoning. It is smart enough to stick to isolated portions of the map and then throw up its shield wall, and moving in close, it can then teleport away. However, this is still not enough. When fighting the Doom Slayer, even the archvile isn't really a match. While it is able to stop a punch momentarily from the Doom Slayer, it really won't save it in the long run. There are many ways in which you could take out an archvile. All involve basically ruining its height advantage. Whether it's breaking its leg, slicing it in half, or just knocking it over, considering it's so tall, I mean, you know, you gotta bring it down to ripping and tearing levels. Once there, it's all about destroying that big brain of its. One of the interesting things is, though, most demons look on in pure hatred and anger when you injure it, especially right before you take it out. The archvile is the only demon that will actually show fear. Again, that intellect is coming into play. Right before you hit it, the archvile realizes that the jig is up, the news is out, and its face changes from one of anger to one of fear before it is quickly caved in by a punch. Honestly, that's a pretty uh, fitting way for the smart demon to go. The only bigger nerd than it might be the Arachnatron, which we'll have to go over in a later episode.